So uh, I guess yeah, I'll, I'll pass this off to Dave in a second. But the first question I wanted to know, and I imagine mm-hmm. a lot of the listeners want to know, is ba- just basically how you're feeling. Uh, you you take some time off for injuries and and uh, yeah. just wondering if, you know, are we going to see you back wrestling sooner than later? Uh, the, the plan, of course, and I was perhaps a little too optimistic. I was hoping to be back by February, um, and uh, it's it's not looking that way anymore. And that's not to say that there was a huge snag or that, you know, there's, there's something that is uh, terribly wrong. It's not that. It's just when you're trying to get appointments and things fixed, you have it in your brain that, oh, yeah, I could just call a number and I'll get in the next day. Um, unfortunately, there are sometimes waiting lists or, or there are other complications which create follow-up appointments and things like that. So unfortunately, and of course, you know, there's like the, the whole COVID thing as well, which just backed everything up by, you know, a good two weeks or so. Um, and then that caused me to miss appointments, which then caused me to have to rebook. And then that extends the time again. It's, it's just that part of the recovery process is always really poopy right now, but, um, it's still on track. I'm still feeling a little bit better, um, as time goes by. And that's without even having to do um, a lot of the major procedures that I need to be done. That's just, um, myself working with, uh, trainers and doing the proper rehab to strengthen, uh, surrounding areas of the injured areas of the body. And um, I guess one of the, the big takeaways from my training uh, lately is that I was leaning too heavily into my strengths um, as a performer and, and as an athlete. And I guess over the years, um, there were either just natural strengths that I had or uh, things that I had overdeveloped. And I was we're relying too much on, on those things. And now that, you know, the knees are gone, the neck's going, uh, you know, I, I lose power in my rights. A, a, lot, a lot of stuff is go, what's going on. Um, it's like, how do you compensate for that stuff? And, and what is it that I can strengthen around those areas that can create a more stable and strong body? And um, it's like a silly process. And I always laugh at myself to see that, wow, as strong as, you know, this thing was, this thing that was adjacent to it was terribly weak and I feel really pathetic. Um, so it's, it's been a process, but it feels good to, to kind of learn from the ground up these new movements that help correct, um, issues that would have otherwise been completely debilitating. So it's going, it's going well. Um, the training is going well. Um, and once I actually am able to try to get the knees fixed, get the neck fixed, you know, you know, the hernia and all that stuff. Um, Hopefully, I'm able to move around uh, much better than I was before, and um, I guess kind of kind of look like a guy that was doing what he was doing ten years ago. Hopefully, hopefully, that's always a hope. Fingers crossed. Uh, one more thing, Dave, before we throw it to you. I, I had uh, gosh, this has probably been ten years now. I had knee surgery, and I remember going through the rehab process, the physical therapy, and they would say, "Okay, now." you know, flex your quad and I want you to make that muscle move. And I would try to make Mm -hmm. that muscle move. And they're like, Nope, you're making the one on the other side move. And because of the injury, uh, like you said, uh, uh, you know, there was an over dependence on certain muscles in the leg and an underdevelopment on under other muscles in the leg. And then learning how to sort of walk correctly again, because if you've mm-hmm. had injuries, you create this gait that's a limp, and then it turns into sort of your normal walk. So all of those things uh, are very clear in my memory for what you just said. And I guess the follow-up to that is, um, are is there any small thing that we all take for granted that because of your injuries that y- it was sort of hard to kind of redevelop or, or, or get back to, to, to how you used to do it before you got injured? I mean, my normal walk now is kind of like a zombie shuffle. So <laughs> I, it's as as the, as days go by, you do don't realize how your your daily activities and, and your normal lifestyle changes, um, unless you have someone actually pointed out to you that really knows the human body and its mechanics. Um, much like your situation that you just talked uh, talked about, I would work with a trainer and someone who's you know very uh, studied in, in human anatomy and all that, and it's like you know do this, flex this, flex only this, now flex this and this together. And you can't, it's like, you know, my body couldn't make those connections anymore. 
And I was like, wait a minute, like, what's what's going on? Like, I, why is it my glute is completely dead? Why won't my glute actually fire? Why can't um, I on command uh, activate my hamstring muscle? It, it's things like that, and it's it's alarming at first because it's like, whoa, like I've been that quad heavy for this long because you know my my knee was in pain and I was trying to compensate in this way, and so you know I've been putting too much of my pressure um, on like my toes and the balls of my feet rather than absorbing any of that impact in, in the glutes and the hammies um, and sitting back in my heels at all. So it's things like that where I've been putting far, far too much impact on the things that actually were hurting because they hurt. And I thought I was, I was actually cushioning them properly. But for me in the moment, it, that's how my body would react uh, just to get through it and to try to kind of continue the facade that Kenny Omega was a hundred percent when he wasn't anywhere close to it. So now when it, and now have you, okay. So of the injuries, okay. So we know mm -hmm. you had the, the hernia, um, nose injury, right? Shoulder. Oh, yep. 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 Um, uh, knees, of course, as you mentioned, is there, yeah. is there, is, yeah. is, 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 is that, is that the list of it or is there actually more? Uh, no, that generally those are like the big ones. Like for me and uh, I'm, I'm a very mobile and explosive wrestler. At least I like to be, I feel like, I sort of went all in on, on having that explosivity to what I do in the ring. So for me, um, even if I have a hernia or, or like a shoulder injury, like I'm not, a, you know, power wrestler. I don't have really have an, uh, an interest in being like a huge kind of power fighter in the ring, but I do always want to kind of be mobile. And I feel like even if I can't be the exact version of myself that I've brought to the table for X amount of years, you know, I still want to be, somebody known for um, their dynamic ability in the ring and someone who's got good stamina in the ring. And it's tough because when the wheels go away, it's, it's really hard to stay on top of your game uh, from a cardio aspect. It's hard to figure out ways. How do I keep my conditioning up now? Because if I, if I can't use my legs, you have to get real creative. And I've learned a lot on um, battle ropes, aerodyne bikes, you know, like weird things. I, I never would. This is the most bear crawling I've ever done in my, my life. Mm -hmm. I hate it. Um, and it's just so just drastically different from what I would normally do for my conditioning. Cause I, I, I dislike being on treadmills. I dislike being on a machine where you're in one place, you're not seeing anything, nothing's changing. And all you can watch is just a clock, uh, tick down or tick up to, to the goal. I like doing, I, I love, you know, running on a beach. I love, um, running on unstable surfaces, whether it be sand, uh, you know, elevation changes, all that. And I like seeing the sights and the sounds around me. I like seeing, you know, animals, nature, all those things. And if I, if I have those things around me, you know, a lot of time passes by and it's like, Oh, wow. I've been, I've been outside running around for over an hour now. And it's fantastic. Um, you know, I love playing basketball, beach volleyball, things like that. And I'm really competitive. So before I know it, I've been trying really hard and pushing myself more than I would have in a, in just a one-on-one -on -one training, uh, scenario because I just don't like to lose. Um, but then when you really can't do anything and it's back to square one, you really do have to find some, you have to make fun out of some of the boring aspects or painful aspects of, of rehabbing. And that's sort of been the tough part was to get to build up that mental fortitude again, where it's like, Oh, this is, this is why I'd rather train through sport than just train, train. Um, and it's getting better, though. I mean, as long as you stick to it, you, it gets uh, becomes part of your habit, becomes part of your daily activity. And um, although I can't say that I that I enjoy my training, I I look forward to it because I see improvements every day, and um, that in itself becomes sort of the reward. And hopefully, the big reward in the end is coming back and being able to wrestle uh, in a healthier state. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.